The G.I. Joes have a jungle trooper, a man known as Rakondo. And what's a Rakondo? It's a recon commando. The Rakondo school graduated a couple thousand soldiers who then imparted their long-range recon skills to their various ranger and lerp units, making it a very important part of the Vietnam War's history. And in that same vein, Rakondo the G.I. Joe has played a vital part of many of G.I. Joe's operations through the years. So let's talk about Rakondo. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I do upload videos just like this every single week. Okay, let's get back to our story. Daniel LeClaire was born in Wheaton, Wisconsin, a place surrounded by state and national forests and protected wildlife areas. It rains and snows a lot, perhaps due to its proximity to Lake Superior, and it gets into the single Fahrenheit digits in the winter. For a long time, it's extremely cold. And as Daniel's file card says, he hates the cold. I suppose it's this prolonged exposure that led to his hatred of the cold and longing for warmer climates. As he grew up, Daniel got his pilot's license, racking up hours with both helicopters and propeller planes. Action Force Rakondo was brought up on the banks of the Snowy River in Australia to the east of Melbourne. This Rakondo is a bit different than the US Rakondo because he learned watercraft like the silent attack kayak instead of aircraft. Eventually, he enlisted in the United States Army as infantry and, per his V-2 file card, also helicopter training at flight school. He served with the 7th Air Mobile Assault Unit where he helped put down an uprising in a small Caribbean island. And he also graduated through the Jungle Warfare Training Center, even becoming a cadre member and expert in both jungle warfare and jungle survival. He spent his days deploying across the globe, solidifying his contempt for the cold and his affinity for the heat. Rakondo spent days in leech-infested water, hacking his way through dense triple canopy forest while dodging bullets and grenades. On one recon mission out in the middle of some nameless, unforgiving jungle, an entire command section of Iron Grenadiers chased him, but he outmaneuvered them and sent them all packing. And now the Iron Grenadiers have a bounty on Rakondo's head. Another time, Rakondo was on a mission in the desert, and the same thing happened, but with some sand vipers that tried to chase him. But he sent them packing too, so badly that they antied up on the bounty that the Iron Grenadiers put on him. By the time he joined the G.I. Joe team, Rakonda was the clear choice to be their first jungle trooper. Larry Hama had him as Booty Rat on early file cards that he sent over to Buzz Dixon and the writing team at Sunbow. Booty Rat was another name for infantry, something Hama would have pulled from Vietnam War era vernacular. Booty is short for boondocks, a word for the backwoods, jungle type terrain. As far as the etymology of the word, it's derived from Tagalog, in a word that means mountain. The word came to the U.S. at the turn of the 20th century during the Philippine-American War, a war which challenged the meanings of both revolution and insurrection. So there's your history lesson for today. Let's get back to Daniel, who first appeared in 1985's G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, with issue 32, although very briefly. In the issue, he rolled into the pit in a vamp with both Blowtorch and Clutch to deliver ice cream and Yojo Cola for a party. After this, Rakondo disappeared for a few months. And in issue 38, he gets some screen time. Hawk sent a team down to Sierra Gordo to rescue Dr. Adele Burkhart for a second time. Stalker, Ripcord, Roadblock, and Gung Ho dropped into the jungle where they ran into Rakondo, who had scouted ahead and garnered the support of the Takaro Indian tribe that lived in the area. He'd been here since his first appearance months ago, so that explains why he disappeared from issue 32. Rakondo was able to lead the team through the jungle to a cobra base at the foot of a cliff where Dr. Burkhart was being held captive. The five of them rappelled down the sheer cliff face, and Rakondo then put on the uniform of a sergeant that Gung Ho knocked out with a boot to the face. On the way out, three of Rakondo's Takaro friends were shot by sniper fire. On their escape, they had to cross a rope bridge dangling over a whitewater rapid river. And it was Takaro custom to leave an offering to the river for safe passage. So Rakondo offered the river spirits the two Dragunov sniper rifles that cut down his three Takaro friends. That'll come back later, so remember he did that. Ultimately, they made it out of the jungle and out of Sierra Gordo, and they found their way to New Orleans to help set up the air sea base in the Gulf waters off of the city. And while setting up, they discovered a mysterious signal. So Rakondo, Snake Eyes, Tripwire, Cutter, and Gung Ho jumped on the whale to go investigate the source of the signal. The whale pinpointed the signal, which was somehow killing all the fish. So they vectored an ace with a squad of Sky Strikers to bomb it. But it was this which ended up blowing the fault line that gave rise to Cobra Island. They quickly rallied for an assault on the new island, and Rakondo was one of the first Joe's feet dry right behind Snake Eyes and Duke. The fight was called off quickly, though, because Cobra Commander's lawyers got the new landmass officially recognized as a sovereign nation. Rakondo was one of the Joe's in the pit looking for Zartan, who was cloaked as various Joe's, while trying to escape. 
In fact, Quick Kick and Rakondo grabbed one guy with a fake face on, but it turned out to be the real Snake Eyes, and they were shocked when they gazed upon his true visage for the first time. Sergeant Slaughter punched out a fake gung ho, which was Zartan, and Rakondo's the one who asked him how he knew which one to deck. I didn't, he was told. The odds were 50 50. Guess I was lucky, Slaughter said to Rakondo as he walked away. In G.I. Joe's Special Mission 2, a World War II era Nazi bomber was discovered, partially encased in a glacier in Greenland. It was alleged to contain nerve toxin, which the Nazis were going to bomb New York City with. One team went to the crash site, while another team, Rakondo included, went to Brazil to find the geriatric Nazi who was now saying he knew how to deactivate the gas canisters. While there, some banditos approached them. However, Rakondo smartly deduced that they were Israeli Mossad agents there on a Nazi hunting excursion. Rakondo started to spill sensitive missions data, but Roadblock stopped Rakondo, knocking him out cold with his fist. But as the team was still setting up, Rakondo regained his consciousness, slipped into the fort, and figured out the old Nazi's plot. He'd actually stolen the money from the Nazis and hid out in South America with it. Mossad and the Joes left this guy to the fate of the other Nazis in the compound, and as Rakondo, Clutch, and Roadblock left, they heard three shots from the house. Justice had been served. He then found himself back in Sierra Gordo to attack a terror drone where Snake Eyes was being held. Rakondo told them too late, Snake Eyes was taken out on a helicopter. During Cobra Civil War, Rakondo joined Torp and Psych Out, who made landfall with the LCT, and took 76 issues for that LCT to show up again. They delivered some heavy mechanized cavalry to the beach, like a Slugger, MBT Mauler, Rolling Thunder, and even the Bridge Layer. Rakondo rode on Rolling Thunder along with Psych Out as they advanced inland. Later, he was driving the Snowcat repainted as a Tiger Cat, while with Tiger Force for G.I. Joe's Special Mission 25. And in the 26th issue of the series, Rakondo was with Lieutenant Falcon and Shockwave in Sierra Gordo again, as they watched the October Guard free El Jefe from Voltar and his forces. But by the end of the story, the Joes were captured. The story then headed to the main title in issue 92, and Rakondo and the team were trapped in a partially submerged cage surrounded by alligators under the NABM headquarters building until Muskrat jumped off the warthog to help them out. Later, Flint, LJ, Roadblock, and Muskrat were again in Sierra Gordo, trying to escape from Darklawn with the new October Guard. Rakondo wasn't in the mission, but do you remember those Dragonoffs I mentioned that Rakondo dropped in the river as an offering? Well, the Takaros showed up, and they had those rifles with them. And once Roadblock mentioned Rakondo, they knew they were friends, and they were actually able to help the Joes out of the jungle. He finally popped up again in issue 170, where he was the door gunner on Wild Bill's Tomahawk for the mission to drop Roadblock, LJ, and Flint in country to extract Darklon. And on dust off, Darklon and Lady J were both hit by ground fire. Rakondo's the one that gave him the bad news. There's only enough plasma and coagulant to save one of them. And then, kneeling in LJ's blood, Rakondo shouted that she was bleeding out. He was worried she wasn't going to make it, but luckily they made it back to the USS flag in time to save both Darklon and Lady J. Ever since then, he's been hanging out at the pit, perhaps also being deployed on off-the-books, off-panel recon and scouting missions in the jungles of the world. We do see him hanging out in the mess hall as the team watch Robert Graves get captured by terrorists and Sierra Gordo on live television. Television, and then again for Roll Call on Memorial Day in issue 263. During the recent Snake Hunt event taking place in the latter part of 2020, Rakondo loaded onto bus number 2 bound for Springfield to rescue Throwdown, sharing a seat with our firefighter buddy Barbecue. And we leave our story with issue 274 as the buses and transport trucks full of G.I. Joe's, October Guard, Zartan, and his dreadnoughts are completely surrounded by Cobra's forces. In Devil's Due, during the war against Serpentor and the Coil, Rakondo and Footloose were able to capture Major Blood and Scrap Iron. Also in Devil's Due, he was down in Sierra Gorda with a team, monitoring troop movements for weeks. Destro had broken off from Cobra, teamed up with the president of Sierra Gordo in an attempt to stop invading forces from Sierra Muerte. If Destro stopped them, President Delacruz would allow Destro to build a vast number of weapons factories in Sierra Gordo. Lowlight was injured in a mortar attack, and so Rakondo had to help him out. They joined up with the Sierra Gordo Ranger team. Rakondo was also featured in the Juliet story that took place in 2006's G.I. Joe's Special Missions Tokyo by Devil's Due. Rakondo and Sparks had become friends, bonded over their love of literature. Storm Shadow had sent in a report indicating that Major Blood had murdered one of the Joes. So Sparks had to find them all, confirming all of them were alive except he was not able to reach his friend Rakondo. So Sparks physically headed down to Sierra Gordo and to the Takaro village where Rakondo was known to hang out and spend time. And it turns out that Rakondo found out that Major Blood was at the village, so he had come to protect his friends. And a fight broke out between the two, where part of the village was destroyed and as the fight drew down to knives and fists at the edge of a waterfall, Blood stopped 
stabbed Rakondo in the back and kicked him off the side. Blood stayed at the village so that the villagers couldn't rescue their friend. And so for all intents and purposes, Rakondo was the Joe that Storm Shadow said was dead in his report. Ah, but secretly, Rakondo was still alive. On Rakondo's request, the villagers lied to Storm Shadow saying he was dead. He sent a message to Sparks confirming this, but asking him to mark him deceased in the database, saying he was now the G.I. Joe's secret weapon in their ongoing effort to stop Major Blood. In Transformers vs. G.I. Joe, Rakondo was one of the many Joes who were sent to the alien world of Cybertron to stop an alien invasion. It was a far out story in more ways than one. On the animated side, Rakondo was heavily featured in Sunbow's first season, where he was voiced by Bill Mori, the same actor who lent his vocal talents to Mutt and a Sunbow-only operative named Colonel Slash. He was in season two as well as the G.I. Joe movie, but didn't say anything the entire time outside of a couple words when he was posted on guard duty outside of Montezuma's tomb and Arise Serpento Arise. And he also had a PSA where he'd telling kids not to climb into things like refrigerators where they might not be able to get back out. In the episode Countdown for Zartan, Rakondo was with the Joes training on the tarmac outside the pit. Then as Freedom showed up to get them, we see Rakondo in a dragonfly helicopter. Remember, he has a pilot's license. They showed up to rescue Spirit and ran into Zartan. In the Jungle Trap, an episode written by Paul Dini, Rakondo was with a team in India to rescue a guy named Dr. Shakur. Their helicopters crashed in the jungle and they were surrounded by jungle traps, hence the name of the episode. Rakondo played chicken with a rhino which he tricked into running right off of a cliff. They ended up overpowering Copperhead and a few Cobra to take over the water moccasin and even put on their Cobra uniforms as a disguise. In Red Rocket's glare, Rakondo helped lead an attack on Destro's base. In part 2 of the Synthoid Conspiracy found Rakondo on Destro's ship with the team as they staged an assault on an uncharted island that was actually a cobra base where duke and the generals were trapped light scammer cobra took rakondo to los angeles to be a technical advisor on a gi joe movie he ran into zartan who he thought was an actor and that encounter ended with dusty and rakondo on a silver mirage in zartan on what he called a python cycle but was actually a ferret atv for a race through the desert as he crashed and was barely conscious he realized whoops that was actually the real zartan he later dressed up like torch to pretend to be tortured by cover girl he was back in the dragonfly for a spell of the siren and an awe striker wearing his red rockets glare shirt for the pit of viper episode at the mall or during memories of mara so he was around vehicles quite a bit in season two as i mentioned he didn't really say anything but he was on the screen for a while during an episode called the most dangerous thing in the world where he was training on the range and later engaged in a battle to defend the base in 2010 a series of animated webisodes were released called operation hiss which are part of the rise of cobra movie continuity in those rakondo was voiced by jake Min since we're talking voices, Brian Bloom voiced Rakondo for the video game that came out at the time of the Rise of Cobra film. Bloom would later voice Zartan for G.I. Joe Renegades. On to action figures. Rakondo's V1 action figure was released in 1984. When designing the figure, a figure designer at Hasbro named Ron Rudat says he was inspired by slouch hats of the Australian Army. In this debut year, Rakondo was also featured in the Battle Stations TV commercial. In 1988, Rakondo joined Tiger Force and came boxed with a Tigerfly helicopter as Wild Bill's replacement. In 2003, Rakondo had another figure as part of the Spy Troops line. In the next year, the Spy Troops figure was repainted and released for Vala vs. Venom. This figure came in a set with the Tiger Storm helicopter, another pilot, Wild Bill, a Sand Viper, and even a comic book. And he was all black now, very much a Night Force look. Still with Vala vs. Venom, 2005 Rakondo came with the Desert Coyote. 2009 Rakondo was part of the Assault on Cobra Island 7 pack set. 2010 Rakondo donned a solar-powered wilderness survival pack for the Pursuit of Cobra line. He also got a pair of hatchets, a multi-snare trap that he sets down not for bear but for cobra. And curiously, he also had with him a tiki mask, something he picked up in the bush maybe when he was embedded with the Takaro tribe. Creo put out a 292-piece Toys R Us exclusive Firebat attack set that came with Rakondo, Bazooka, and a Cobra pilot. On the cover, we see Rakondo firing off a salvo from Cover Girl's Wolverine while Bazooka clutches his fudgy bars and launches a rocket at the Firebat too. 2015 Rakondo was the Tiger Force marksman and he came in a convention exclusive set called Tiger Force vs. Iron Grenadiers where he got an African weapon called a Mambale. And with that, that's a wrap on this my friends, the story of Rakondo. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.